Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video what we're going to be going over is creating a door in which we can open and it will also have an animation for the handle so it will go down and the door will open and close and all that great stuff which you'd want. So I should say as well this will also work in Unreal Engine 4 and also a little disclaimer the door looks terrible that's purely just because it needs to be set up in a specific way and I couldn't find anything like that online for free so I just thought if you want something doing properly do it yourself so I did that obviously didn't texture it didn't spend much time on it but this is what I've got but enough talking let's get in and I'll show you what it is we're going to make today so if I go up to the door I can press E the handle will go down and the door will then open and if I press E to close it again the door will close with no handle moving that time because obviously when you're opening the door you need to push the handle down but when you're closing the door you don't need to push the handle down so basically the way you'd expect to open a door is what we're going to be going with in creating today. This just adds another level of realism and just makes it look a little bit nicer than just opening the door by itself, which you'd normally see. So this is what we're going to be going over in creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is actually import your door, which you're going to be using. Now, the very important thing to mention for this is the door and the door handle need to be two separate meshes. So you notice I've got the door here and I've got the door handle here, two completely separate meshes because we need to animate them separately. And what I should also say as well is the door has its origin point or its rotation point or whatever you want to call it down in the bottom corner here. So when I rotate it on its axis, it's opening as you'd expect a door to do. And the same with a handle, except the handle I've got here. As you can see where this line goes through, that is where it's going to be rotating from like so. So again, that's very important of what you need to do. Which is again, I couldn't find that for free. You probably can, but I didn't have a lot of time to look further, so I just ended up making myself very quickly on Blender. But once you've got your door and handle imported, we're going to want to create a blueprint. So we can right click, create a blueprint class, create an actor, and I'm just going to very simply name this door VP like so, opening it up straight away. Now what I'm also going to do is hit control space and select both of my static meshes for my door like so. Back in the blueprint, I'm going to add static mesh multiple assets and now we've got both our door and door handle in here perfectly like so. What we want to do now is just move our door handle into the correct position. So for you this might already be in the right position but if it's not what I'm going to do is just toggle off snapping so I can move it more freely and get it into the right position as you can see here. I'm just going to put it somewhere like this, move my camera speed down so I can get more precise once again and I'm just going to put it here. I think that's going to be perfect for me. What I'm then also going to do is drag the door handle onto the door to parent it like so. So when I now open the door, the handle is going to move with it as well, because obviously the handle isn't just going to stay floating there in real life. We want it to move with the door. We'll compile and save that. The final thing we want to do in the viewport is add a box collision. And this is going to be where the player has to be in order to be able to interact and open the door. So the player needs to be within this box collision to open the door. So really customize this to be how big or how small you want and in whichever position you want as well. But for me, this is going to work perfectly fine. So I'm going to compile and save that and I'll go straight over to the event graph here. Once we're in here, what we're going to do is we can delete these three nodes and we can right click and get the E keyboard event or whatever button it is you want to do to be able to interact with the door. So if you also already have an interact action mapping, you can use that in here as well. Then out of this, what we want to do is we want to create a new variable. So we're going to hit the plus variable, naming this opening question mark, leaving that as a boolean. So we know whether we are or aren't opening the door. That's important because again, I want to play the handle when opening, but not when closing. So we're going to drag and drop this in and get it. And then out of this, we're going to get a not boolean. So we can then simply just invert whatever this is and then we're going to set opening to that value. So every time we interact with the door, we're going to be inverting the opening value. So by default, the door is closed and opening is false, as you can see here, which means we're gonna invert that so it's true and set it to true, so we're then opening it. The next time this will be true, invert to false, which is then setting it to false, so we're closing it. So that is why we're doing this here. Then after this, we're gonna hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting that up into there. So if we are or aren't opening, we're going to do different things. Firstly, out of true, if we are opening, we're going to add timeline like so. And I'm going to name this one open slash close door T for timeline, perfectly like so, leaving that in play. And false of the branch is going to go into reverse like so. 
So we're opening, we're playing the timeline, when we're closing, we're reversing the timeline, basically just doing the opposite of opening it. So I hope that all makes sense. And so we're going to double click the timeline to open it up straight away. Now in here, in the length, is where you're going to input how long you want the animation to be. So in total, I want this to be two seconds long. You can really customize this to get it perfect for you, but for me, this is what I'm doing. Then I'm going to add a track, making sure it's a float track, and I'm going to name this door handle, or door handle track, whatever you want to name it. Then I'm going to right click in the graph, add key to curve float with a time of 0, value of 0. Then add another key with a time of 0 0.25 and a value of 1. Then do that again with a value of 0 0.5 and a value of 0. So why we're doing this is because basically what's going to happen is that the door handle animation is going to follow this. So it's going to open and close over the span of 0.5 seconds. That's quick enough for me. You might want to make it slower, you might want to make it quicker, do whatever you want. And if you wanted, you can right click on the top one and change it to auto and right click on the others to do the same. And that will be a little bit more smooth if that's what you wanted. So it'll actually more smoothly open and close. Really, whatever you want to do, you can do it. And in fact, I might actually do that as well, like so. Then we're going to add another track, make sure it's a float track once again. This one is just going to be the door. So this one is opening the handle, this one is opening the door, because again we want to do these separately. And I'm going to right click, add key to curve float with a time of 0.25 and a value of 0. The reason why I'm starting at 0.25 is because I obviously want to pull the handle down before opening it. But what you do when opening a door is obviously pull the handle down, then start opening, and then you pull the handle up. So that's why when the handle is fully down, the door is going to start opening. Then we're going to right click, add another key to curve float, go all the way to the end of the timeline, which for me is 2, and a value of 1, perfectly like so. So this is what we've got. So we're now going to be pushing down the handle, and as we're pulling it back up again, we're going to start opening the door. And when we reverse, we're going to be closing the door, but we don't want to do the handle as well, so I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. So once we set this up how you want, we're going to go back to the event graph like so. What we're going to do here is you can see we now have the door handle and the door float tracks accessible for us to use here. So all we need to do now is just actually move the door and the door handle relative to this. So we're going to drag in references to the door and door handle like so. And we're going to do the door first. So I've got the same one, sorry. So we're going to do door first. Drag out of the door and we're going to set relative rotation. Right click in the rotation and split structure pin. Connecting that into update of the timeline like so. Then what we're going to do is out of the Z of new rotation, we're going to get a lerp. And the alpha of this lerp is going to be the float track for door. Because what's going to happen is when it goes between 0 and 1, that's going to go between A and B of this lerp. A and B being the open and closed values. So A is going to be closed, which is what it is at the moment. So that's 0, as you can see on the rotation of the Z here. And open, I'm going to do minus 110. The way I got that value was by simply just rotating the door into the open position, which I want, and figuring that that is minus 110 on the Z. And you can do the same with the handle as well. So rotate it into the position you want, so let's say 40, and that is then the value which you want to use. So that's how you find out those values. So let's go back to the event graph here, like so. We don't need to do the X or Y unless you have changed that. So if you select your door again, the rotation is 0, 0, 0. So for me, I can leave it as 0, 0, 0. Then after this, we want to do the handle. But again, we only want to do the handle when we're opening the door. So we can use the variable which we created earlier. So we can get this and then put this into a branch, connecting that into here like so. So true, if we are opening, we want to do the handle. False, we're not opening, we don't want to do anything. So we're going to do the same thing. So out of door handle, we're going to do set relative rotation, right click the rotation and split the structure pin connecting that into true of the branch, like so. X, Y, and Z we can leave as zero, but this time instead of coming out the Z, we're gonna come out the Y, as again you saw when we rotated it just a minute ago. And we're going to get a lerp, with the alpha being the door handle track this time, A being zero, B being 40. Again, all of these values I just got a moment ago when we came in here and moved these like so. So I hope that will make sense. And again, these values might be different for you, because you'll be using your own custom meshes as well. So we can compile and save that, and that is actually now the code done for us. The door is now going to be animated for opening and closing. However, we can't actually interact with it just yet, so what we need to do is right-click on the box collision, add event, 
add a component begin overlap, right click again and add event component end overlap. Then very simply we can right click to get the player controller and we can then also drag out of begin overlap and enable input with the target being self because we want to enable the input of the door and player controller obviously being get player controller and then end overlap will be disable input once again target being self player controller being get player controller and what enable and disable input does is it essentially allows this blueprint here to use the player's input so when we press the e key that will only work if the player is, is inside of this box collision because when we leave it once again we're disabling the input so we can't do that so i hope that all makes sense if you do want a more detailed explanation on how doors work then i will leave a link in the description down below where i went over in more detail of how to actually set up a door in blueprints and that's also a little bit more efficient to this because i'm using interfaces and other things like that so we're going to compile save and close this we can drag it in a level and we should see this working perfectly for us so let's hit play walk up to it press e handle went down and it's opening and if we close it the handle doesn't move at the end perfectly like so so i think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do we've set it up so we can open the door with an animation and the handle will also animate so it'll go down and then open perfectly like so as you can see here and again i think this just looks a little bit better to what you normally have in a game so thanks so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one